fancy. There you are. Thank you, Eric. Welcome, JKPC and Heavenly Grace. Let's turn to Ecclesiastes, chapter 4. We will read a scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. Verse 12. Second part. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. I love to ask questions. Here scripture says, a cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. Three strands. First strand is JKPC. What is the second strand? What is the third strand? Perfect. <laughs> so smart. Smart Christians we are. It is joy in heaven when his children, especially from different backgrounds, different cultures, different nationals come together and worship him. In a home, a father loves his uh, children to be united. And this brings the togetherness of John Knox and also heavenly grace brings joy in heaven. It is a joyful occasion for all of us to worship the Lord together. So as we worship the Lord, may Lord help us to lift up our voices and our hearts to worship him. As we receive the scripture, we have two short messages from Pastor Garrett and me. May Lord speak to our hearts individually about the church. May we enjoy this service today. I leave to Pastor Garrett to pray for all of us. Great. Thank you, Pastor VJ. And yeah, I want to say welcome. It is so great to have both churches together. It's uh, just a wonderful feeling because we, we partner together. And it's not just Heavenly Grace and JKPC. This Sunday is a Worldwide Communion Sunday. So we are worshiping along with Christians throughout the whole world. Uh, celebrating our relationship with Christ and with one another. So thank you, thank you for being a part of it. And if you're watching online, uh, thank you for joining us as well. So let's pray together. Dear God, thank you so much that through your son, uh, Christ, that he came and gave his life that we might be reconciled to God and to one another. So we ask that in, on this Sunday, as we are uh, one people, one church, that you will speak to our hearts and minds through the music, through the messages, through the prayers, and, and just being together. So Lord, bless us uh, that you might be glorified. And we ask this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Amen.
announcements want to come on up so we have heavenly grace announcements and jkpc for Veen. why don't you go first good morning everyone it's so good to be in the house of the lord to worship the lord together this way and to bless his holy name here are some announcements for heavenly grace church if you are a visitor or first time guest please meet with us right after the church 
We would love to have fellowship with you and to serve you in whatever way possible. And this Wednesday, there is a prayer meeting for the youth, both from middle school to high school. Please join. It's virtually done via Google Meet at 8.30 p.m. Coming Friday, there's Bible study at 7.30 p.m. at one of our houses. And uh, we are wrapping up Book of Jude. And uh, please review this week because there is a test and then review in the Bible study oh. time. Yeah, it's going to be a short quiz. It's good if you would prepare for that. And next Sunday, God willing, we will meet for worshiping the Lord together on Sunday morning at 11.15. That would be all for Heavenly Grace Church. Awesome. Thank you. I better study up for this one. Um, we have um, information in the bulletin, but a couple of hot topics I want to let you know is trunk or treat is happening. It's for everyone, the whole community, um, all churches. And so if you'd like to sign up to join us or to host a trunk, there's a table for signups. And you'll see, even though it's hot, it's Operation Christmas Child Time. Grab your box. If you don't know about this wonderful mission, I can share more at the table afterwards. But you'll be filling boxes with necessities, with um, school supplies, with toys, but mostly with love. So we'll um, definitely share more about that, And but it's not too early to start picking out stuff for your box. But right now, um, we're going to pass the piece. This goes back further than 2,000 years. So, of course, our, our own little tradition is we can pass the piece with a handshake, with a high five, or a hug. So, everyone pass the peace of Christ. Come on up up here. You look so cute today. All right, calling all children. Come on up with me. At John Knox Church. Hello, hold on. Oh, perfect. We always have a kid's message before the kids go to Sunday school. So come on up. You can sit on the steps. You can sit on the, on the stage with me. So all kids, come on up. And even if you're a teen or an adult, whoever feels like a children, we're all children of God. I um, wanted to let you know, uh, kids will be picked up today in room A, and youth will go to room D with PJ, and have, uh, some will have communion as well. But we do hope you enjoy for the potluck afterwards. All right. First of all, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay. Look what I brought today. It was such a good celebration. In fact, Varsha, could you help me too? Where's Varsha? There, there's a blue bucket. Everyone, this is what I love to hand out. Everyone gets one Duplo, okay? So a Duplo is a bigger Lego, like your sister, little sister and brother. All right, everyone gets one Duplo, just one, just one. There you go, there you go. They're all good, whatever color it is. Varsha's also passing it out. Not there, there you go, there you go. All right, who didn't get one? Du oh, you did not get that. There you go. All right, here you go. There you go. All right. Does everybody have one Duplo? You got one? You got one? You got one? Nathaniel, where's your Duplo? Okay. Awesome. All right. Oh, Pete, come on up. Here's your Duplo, Pete. Here you go. Here you go. 
I told you, we're all children of God. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. So this is a day of celebration, World Community Sunday. So let's go ahead and each just by ourselves, by ourselves, play with your Duplo. What? Oh, cat's fun. Wait a minute. Hold, oh, okay, you're having too much fun, actually. That's a good idea there. Okay, hold on. Hold your Duplo. All right, wait, wait. It, okay, throwing can be fun. Let's actually not throw in church. Maybe just hanging your finger out. Hanging your finger on. If there was only a way that we can have more fun with Duplos. Build? Wait, how do I build with, how do I? How do I build with this? Oh, Gavin, Gavin, will you show me? Oh, wait, here. Back here on my hand. Here. I oh. Know, I know how to build with these. He's, wait, you're putting them together. Stack them on my hand. Can you try that? Try putting them together. Stack them on my hand. Stack them together. You can share. Oh, awesome. Put them on my hand, everybody. Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to hold on to this one. All right. And so... Is that was that more fun building? Put a hand on. <laughs> okay, hold. Watch out! It's gonna fall. All right. So, are you saying that it's more fun to use the duplos to build. to build? That means that we need to. Whoa! That's a good job. No, that's not that. That's that. Here we go. Okay. So that means that these duplos were designed to be used what? Together. Together. Is it much more fun? Yeah. All right. Well, this is World Communion Sunday. All right. Everyone, everyone, quiet voices right now, or actually listening ears right now. Gavin. So it's World Communion Sunday, and we're celebrating that we're all united in Christ. We all are followers of Jesus, and that's something to celebrate. And in the Bible, it tells us that the church is one church. It's built to serve the Lord. But you know what? Watch your eyeball. Know what else the Bible tells us? Jerry, could you show us the Bible scripture? This is going to be from Ephesians. If you can read, will you help me read this? Yeah. In him you are being, being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by the Spirit. Uh, Ephesians what? Two, two, two. Is that cute? Together. So... All right, who can see, hold your, hold your thought right now. Who can see, oh, will you go back to that little um, picture? Who can see what this church is being built out of? People. People. I think that's Jerry on the very top holding the cross. Jerry, where are you? Jerry, will you stand up? Will you stand up? Let's see what shirt he's wearing. Yeah, that's Jerry. That's Jerry. <laughs> so the church is not just these walls. The church is all of us. And when we're not here on campus, when we're out at home or out at school or even at the store, the library, or at the dog park, we are still the church. And God has made us to work together. So we'll be talking more about how God loves us and how God wants us to love him and to love others. All right? So right now, take your two hands. Put your hands out like this. Shake your hands. Jazz hands. Now... The theme to get today is together. Put your hands together. This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, thank you for these children. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Help us to work together and to, uh, to share your love. Share your love. Everyone said a big amen. All right. Hold on to your Duplos. We're going to go all the way over across the courtyard to rooms that you can hold on to them, okay? We can play more when we get to Sunday school with a lesson. All right. Grab your Duplos. Pete, Pete, did you keep yours? You can hold on to it. Okay. Oh, thank you. All right. <laughs> thank you. Hold on to your Legos. <laughs> um, 
can we all stand up as we sing this song? So in this song, we hear hallelujah. It comes seven times. So if possible, I request all the American brothers and sisters, please sing, at least sing that hallelujah. ಅತ್ಯುನ್ನತ ಸಿಂಹಾಸನಮು ಪೈ ಆಸೀನು ನೈನಾನೇವಾ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪಿ ವಿವೇ ಆರಾಧಿಂತು ನಿನ್ನೆ ಅತ್ಯುನ್ನತ ಸಿಂಹಾಸನಮು ಪೈ ಆಸೀನುಡವೈನಾನೇವಾ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪಿ ವಿವೇ ಆರಾಧಿಂತು ನಿನ್ನೆ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪಿ ವಿವೇ ಆರಾಧಿಂತು ನಿನ್ನೆ ಆ ಕರುಡಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಆಲೋಚನಕರ್ತಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಬಲಮೈನ ದೇವಾ ನಿತ್ಯುಡವಗುತನ್ರಿ ಸಮಾಧಾನಧಿಪತಿ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಆಶ್ಚರ್ಯ ಕರುಡಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಆಲೋಚನಕರ್ತ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಬಲಮೈನ ದೇವಾ ನಿತ್ಯುಡವಗುತನ್ರಿ ಸಮಾಧಾನಧಿಪತಿ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಬಲಮೈನ ದೇವಾ ನಿತ್ಯುಡವಗುತನ್ರಿ ಸಮಾಧಾನಧಿಪತಿ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಆ ಆಶ್ಚರ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಅಂದ್ರ ಕಲಸಿ ಕೃಪಾ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಕೃಪತೋ ರಕ್ಷಿಂಚಿತಿವೇ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ನೀರಕ್ತಮಿಚ್ಚಿ ವಿಮೋಚಿಂಚಿ ನಾವೇ ನಾರಕ್ಷಣಕರ್ತ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಕೃಪಾ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಂಪೂರ್ಣ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ಕೃಪತೋ ರಕ್ಷಿಂಚಿತಿವೇ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ 
ನೀರಕ್ತಮಿಚ್ಚಿ ವಿಮೋಚಿಂಚಿನಾವೇ ನಾರಕ್ಷಣಕರ್ತ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ ನೀರಕ್ತಮಿಚ್ಚಿ ವಿಮೋಚಿಂಚಿನಾವೇ ನಾರಕ್ಷಣಕರ್ತ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರ Let's turn to 1st Corinthians chapter 2. Sorry, 1st Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, saints by calling, with all who in, what's there next? Every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means it talks about the universal church. All who in every place call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Gracious Heavenly Father, this morning as we have opened the scriptures, Lord, speak to our hearts, encourage us. As I and Pastor Garrett or preaching from this pulpit. May the manna fall double fold today. Lord, I am unworthy servant, filthy at heart. You have cleansed, washed. Lord, I pray that you will purify my mouth as your words come out. Lord, stand behind me as I preach to your children. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Color. Skin color. So one small daughter was coming and asking her dad, Dad, why some people are black? And he began thinking and he said, if you go to the supermarket, you find different fruits, different color. Apple, plum, peach, mango. God has designed different colors for different fruits. Or God sometimes is a God of variety, not uniformity. And he said, God has created people with different skin colors so that every tongue, every knee, every tribe will confess that I am the Savior and I am the Lord. Praise the Lord. God has given us different skin colors. I am brown or black or we see our good American brothers and sisters white. 
I see different colors in this congregation. So when Paul was talking to Corinthians, he has somehow spiritually in his mind all of us. As he was writing to Corinthians, immediate people are Corinthians. He's addressing, and somehow spiritually he saw beyond Corinthian church, and he began mentioning to all people in every place that includes India, that includes Pakistan, the thing that includes America. Wherever believers gather together and come in his name, they become his children irrespective of culture, irrespective of skin color, irrespective of the past religious system. Paul is addressing this universal church. Here God has gathered two churches together. God has rather gathered his children together today. It's a blessed and joyful day. Heavenly grace may be a branch from the, uh, from the root system. JKPC is another branch from the root system, but the root is the Lord Jesus Christ. In the world, there may be many different branches, many different de denominations, but everything is connected to the root, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the universal church. We are the small lights that God has put. JKPC is one small light. Heavenly Grace is one small light. But when all these lights come together, it becomes a big fire and brings great light. That's the purpose of God for the universal church, that we should be light to the world. We should be united. So coming back, this is a joyful occasion that God has put us together. Once I went to North India, I am from South India, South Indian people are either black or a brownish color. And North Indians are like, uh, not as uh, American white, but they are like white color. And when I was standing, I went there, there were about seven churches came together. And when I'm seeing like this, I see all the colors there. I began thinking, what these people eat? These North Indians, they have different food. South Indians have different, we eat a lot of spices. Spices are originated from my place, Vijayawada and Guntur. <laughs> Vijay from Vijayawada. <laughs> and North Indians, they don't eat spices. They, they eat less uh, mild food. And they eat uh, ro roti and naan, which we have for fellowship lunch today. Mild food. And the way they talk, the language is different. Then I, I began thinking that everything is different, but one thing is common. The Lord Jesus Christ and the faith system that they have, the hearts are aligned in one thing, that is faith. My heart was so glad whenever I see different people together. It's a joyful occasion that God has given. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1, or, uh, 1 and 2 talks about that many people of same faith, of our faith, many different people. It's, that's a universal church. We are the universal church. Now Paul is mentioning about the universal church in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 in verse 2, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus. You see, those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus that means we are sanctified people. God, at a point of time, has washed us from all of our sins and have been washing our sins until we die. So we are sanctified people, cleansed, washed people. In India, as I was meditating on this verse, I went way back, 30 years back. My grandmother used to wash the dishes those days in the house, we used to use soap, rinse soap, rinse soap, guttunda, guttunda, nirma soap. Without seeing that ad, I don't think there is anyone here who did not see the ad, nirma, washing powder, nirma. But outside the house, outside the house, uh, on special occasions, my grandmother, the big vessels, she used to wash those vessels with mud. 
And I used to think, why she is washing those vessels with uh, mud? And then they become dirty, and then she takes to the tap, and she washes, washes with uh, water, and that becomes a pure vessel, cleansed vessel. Whenever something is washed with water, that becomes uh, cleansed. And in the Bible, water is symbol of the word of God. That's how God purifies us and washes us. And scripture says that we are sanctified people and three people are involved in sanctification. Three people are involved in washing us. First, the father, Jude chapter one. I mean, verse one. Jude verse one. It talks about the first person in the Trinity who is involved in our sanctification. If anyone has King James Version, that's easy to understand. Jude, verse 1. Jude, a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are sanctified, King James Version says, beloved in God the Father, sanctified by the Father, so when a believer is sanctified, three persons are involved. One is Father, and second one in First Corinthians chapter one in verse two. First Corinthians chapter one in verse two, to the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, the second person, the Lord Jesus Christ, is involved in our sanctification, and the third one that we see in Second Peter. Sorry, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. According to the foreknowledge of God the Father, by the sanctifying work of the Spirit. You see, sanctifying work of the Spirit. Now can you repeat after me? Three persons involved. The first person is our Heavenly Father in Jude chapter 1. Who is the first person? Heavenly Father, Jude 1. Second is the Lord Jesus Christ, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 2, who is the second person? The Lord Jesus Christ. The third person in 1 Peter chapter 2 is the Holy Spirit. Who is it? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's God's desire for all of us to be sanctified, to be growing in him. God wants us to be sanctified and be like his son. Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. Let Christ be formed in you. Why God is sanctifying? Because he wants to see Christ in us. That's the purpose that all these three people are working again and again in our lives. That they may see Christ cross in our lives. When we go to hospital, when they take x-ray, what do you see? Do you see the flesh and blood in the x-ray? You don't see that. What do you see? The bones, bare bones. Everything else is invisible. When God does x-ray in our body or in our spiritual body, he wants to find cross in you. That's the sanctification. Sometimes we may fumble. Sometimes we may fumble in the sanctification. One son was caught and put into jail. And that son is a pastor's son. When he was put into jail, the news came to the father. He's a pastor and he was playing golf along with uh, the church elders. And the news came to the pastor, the father, and said, your son is in jail. And he thought, no, it's, it's impossible. And then he went to the jail and he found the son. And they showed the pictures of the son stealing some stuff from the grocery stores supermarkets. He couldn't digest it. And then he was served some time and he was put in whatever penalty, a few days, and he came home and all the elders and all the church people began telling him, do you know who your father is? Do you know your, who your father is? How can you do this? That made him to think, Today, I want to remind all the children of God, do you know who your father is? 
Do you know who is your heavenly father is? Our God, almighty God, who created heavens and the earth. And he is reminding all of us today to be sanctified. If there is any sin in your life, anything that is holding you to come back, come to God wholeheartedly and worship him wholeheartedly. If anything is holding you back, he's giving you a promise today. If you confess your sins, I will cleanse you, wash you, and sanctify you. You see, before God uses you, you need to be sanctified. Without that, God cannot use you. In the tabernacle, we see all the vessels to be used in this tabernacle in the Old Testament. They need to be purified and cleansed. If the high priest uses those vessels without washing it, he will die. The vessel needs to be sanctified and cleansed and washed. I think the father, when he was seated on the ark, when he was seen looking at these cleansed vessels, is it purified or not? Spiritually, I think he would have seen you and me through those vessels. The vessels of JKPC, the vessels of heavenly grace must be purified, sanctified, and to be used in my sanctuary. That's the will of the Father. All of us need to be cleansed, washed, and sanctified before we used. And it is a purpose of God that to use to be uh, to use every believer. There is a purpose for every believer, not only the messengers, not only the singers that we sing, every part of the body is important and God wants to use you in a different way. I want to just mention one thing and close. All of our purpose is same. Matthew's gospel, chapter 28, verse 19. Go and preach to the nations. First step, I want you to ask in your heart, Lord, if there is any sin in me, any guilt in me, please take it away. Please sanctify me right now. I want to be used in your sanctuary. Lord, use me. That's the purpose of God. That's the responsibility of uh, uh, every child of God to be used by God. First, submit yourself unto the God as a universal church as we come together. Second thing, I want to give you a homework. In this week or in this, every week, once in a week at least, have a gospel track, have a gospel track in your car or wherever. Try to give just one track in a week. Or just share your testimony to one person in a week. Or just go and talk to a person just once in a week. You know, when I was converted, I, 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 I'm from a different religion. In the world, uh, when I got converted, when I, was, when I wanted to give the gospel to someone else, this is my attitude. If I have the gospel track, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Fear, <laughs> fear, go or not. There's a great struggle. Second world war is happening here. <laughs> Shall I go or not? But I observed something. But when I just uh, pushed myself, Lord help me, because Christ has said, when you go, it is not you who is talking. I'll put my words in your mouth. That's my encouragement. So when I pushed myself and when I went and gave the track, you see, 99% of the time people are receptive. They welcome you. They don't slap you. People never slapped me <laughs> for giving the gospel. So leave that fear. God wants to sanctify you and use you. May God bless all of us. Let's pray. Please stand, please, for a minute. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this precious time that you have given, O oh Lord. Lord, we have grown so much in you. We have heard so many sermons. We have heard so many word, words from the Bible. Now, this is the time, O oh Lord, to go to the next step. Lord, sanctify us, cleanse us, and help us to reach out to the people as you have commanded us in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, in verse 19. Lord, we thank you and help us, O oh Lord, as we reach to the people. It is not we who talk. Please put your word in our mouths appropriately. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Choir is going to sing a setting of uh, How Firm a Foundation. It's a great hymn that reminds us again that Christ is the foundation of our lives and that he's with us through difficult times. Good, good morning. Uh, I'm Jeff Wilburn, um, pro- one of the property elders here at John Knox. And we're, the scripture reading this morning is from Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. Uh, and this is uh, titled, The Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, the message on the universal church and how we are in the power of the Father, Son, and Spirit. So um, my message is connected with that. So it'll have some elements the same as Pastor VJ, uh, but as a universal church, what are some of the uh, signs or qualities of being a, a healthy church? And so as Jeff just read, it comes out of Acts chapter 2. And it goes back to all believers devote themselves to the apostles' teaching, which is uh, what we would call scripture or the Bible. And uh, it's uh, one of the elements, first elements of what it means to be the uh, church of, of God. Is biblical teaching, preaching, um, is this keep going out or is it just me? So do we need to 
do something different? Should I use the, the mic? Because I, I hear myself going in and out. So it might be the receiver? <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll keep trying, and if it's, if it's an issue, then we'll just trade it out. Um, but so the, the Bible needs to be a part of our lives, as uh, Pastor Vijay said. And it goes back to 2 Timothy. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. So scripture's role is, is to teach us and to help us see ourselves as we are. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So scripture needs to be very much a part of our lives. So just you don't have to raise your hand, but as you think of scripture, uh, do you read it every day? Um, do you think it through? Okay. How many of you eat food every day? <laughs> okay. You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> um, but if... Most of us are committed to eating, right? We're devoted to eating, but devoted to Scripture, you know, we're kind of, oh, well, I can, I can miss it today or this week. Um, but it's the same kind of thing where we need to be spiritually nurtured uh, in the same way. Uh, the word to us as pastors, preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not, Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. So we are to preach the word of God uh, in times when it's easy. Sometimes it's hard. I like this. It says patiently correct. Uh, so it's kind of saying that some people are difficult. But, you know, I know it's not heavenly grace because Pastor VJ says you guys are all perfect. And, uh, and then, you know, uh, JKPC... You, you've been great. I have hardly had to be patient at all. No patience required at all. I better watch it or else I'm in trouble. But patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage. So it's not just to encourage but to correct you as well. That's our job. Your job as people, don't just listen to God's word or our preaching. Do what it says. Don't forget what you heard and then God will bless you for doing it. So you don't get credit just for sitting here and kind of getting through a message. It's to hear and to apply and do something with it. Then God will, will bless you. And as I've told JKPC, if you're not writing things down, you're going to forget, uh, let's see, I think 85% of what you heard come Tuesday. <laughs> and I think, I'm thinking that you're going to forget it by the time you hit coffee, but... Uh, you know, do what it says. A second element, all the believers devoted themselves to fellowship. Or the word is koinonia. And that's not just gathering together. It's, it means really connected in a deeper relationship with one another. As a matter of fact, um, as we are unified as Christians, in the book of Acts, uh, unified uh, was said ten times in the first five chapters. So those relationships are, are really crucial. And I think part of it, uh, it helps us when we understand, above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. So we find our connection as citizens of heaven, and not as uh, country, ethnicity, and certainly in this time, not political parties, because all those things can divide us. It says, above all, you must see yourselves as citizens of heaven. All the other stuff, it doesn't matter. And that's why we can be the universal church. We can come together because our bond is uh, Christ and the gospel. So standing side by side with one strong purpose, to tell the good news. So that's what we're about. We're, we're not about political movements, about countries, about our own little group. It's really about Christ. And that's what 
draws us together, unifies us, allows us to be together. You know, and uh, to understand this and live this out is really important because you and I tend to be kind of selfish and look at what we want. And um, uh, Paul says this, when you follow the desires uh, of your sinful, your self-centered nature, the results are very clear. Hostility, quarreling, gossip, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, uh, dissension. So when we're self-centered, these things all become a part of our, our church, our group, um, divisions. And I like the translation that says, the feeling that everyone is wrong except those in your little group, uh, and envy. Uh, because it's so easy to kind of get into people who agree with us and everybody else is wrong or stupid. Uh, not to say that we um, shouldn't have disagreements, but our unity is in Christ as citizens of heaven and allows us to get beyond just our self-centered ways. So live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Uh, so harmony and humility. So, you know, how many, or you don't have to raise your hand. Do you think you're better than other people? You know, smarter, are you ever wrong? Maybe, you know, just everybody's stupid and you're the one that has all the answers. And why isn't the pastor talking to you? Uh, because you know it all. Uh, but if that is your attitude uh, towards other people, you know, then that's not working towards harmony and humility. And God, through the Bible, always says, stands against those who are proud, always saying they're right. So humility will help not only your relationship with each other, but with God as well. And then, um, so teaching, relationships, sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper. So part of today um, is about communion together and enjoying this meal that Christ calls us to celebrate as his people, his family. And so regardless of any of the other differences that we uh, come as individuals to this table uh, to celebrate together as one. And then also it says in enjoying fellowship and, and meals together. And so one of the I think nice things that Heavenly Grace gets to do, they get to eat together, you know, wonderful food after every uh, service. We don't do that. We have, you know, little goodies, but they have a full-on meal. And, um, you know, it gives them a chance uh, in ways uh, to spend just more time. And then serving each other is also, I think, an element to a healthy church. It says they met in homes for the Lord's Supper, shared in their meals with great joy and generosity. And, and I think this whole thing of joy and generosity go together. I think when you're generous, you know, the joy follows. And then if you're joy in the spirit, generosity is a part of it. And so it, it's elements of a healthy church, I think, incorporate both those. So be careful, you know, if you don't, you know, I don't want to share, or I want to make sure I get my food or my cookie, um, you know, don't get in my way, uh, that that, again, breaks down some of that koinonia, that relationship. And, and that's what helps us to be attractive, that joyfulness. They shared their meals with joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. I think if you're a joyful church, a generous church, you know, people are, you know, are going to have a, a good feel about you. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who are being saved. I think it's much easier to have people join you if you're happy and generous than stingy and bitter and angry and yelling. Um, and so... That's a part of it, being joyful, being generous. And then finally, all the believers devoted themselves uh, to prayer. And in Colossians, it says, devote yourselves to prayer with an alert mind and a thankful heart. So, this, so some of you pray to, go, to fall asleep. 
<laughs> you know, and so you're hoping not to have an alert mind. You say, oh, I'm, you know, my mind's going, I'll start praying. And you try to deliberately kind of lose consciousness. But you say, no, be alert in your prayers. So three things. Start your prayer with Christ. Uh, for you know that God paid a ransom to save you, and it was not with mere gold or silver, which loses their value. It was the precious blood of Christ. So if you start with Christ, praising him, understanding how much he loves you, I, I think that helps enrich your, your prayer life. Just how much God wants to give you, not you know, how much you're trying to obey God or listen to God or give to God. God is just one to bless you through Christ. And then ask God to, to guide your thoughts. And one of the verses I have in my prayer journal that I, you know, read before I start praying is, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. So it's pointing out, Lord, if there's anything in me, you know, I want to confess that. I want to make things right. And then guide me in the future. You know, where do I need to go? What do I need to do this day? And then third, you know, ask God to use your life for his purpose, starting today. And I like this verse in Romans. It's a living Bible. Give yourselves completely to God, every part of you, to be tools in the hands of God to be used for his good purpose. So, you know, God, how can you use me this day? And I encourage you, uh, if you want to grow in faith, don't pray for your life to be easy. Because say, oh, Lord, just help this to be an easy, comfortable day. I mean, you can pray that, but you, you know that when God works, it's, it's through the difficulty and the hard things, the things that incorporate faith. Um, so God is more concerned about your character than, than your comfort. So it's just an encouragement. Don't just pray for everything to go well. And remember to pray with gratitude and thanksgiving. Tell God what you need. That's the easy part. The hard part is, and thank him for all that he has done. Because sometimes God will answer it, and you just already moved on. So thanking him each and every day, I think, is a part of that prayer. So how do you be a healthy church? We said, uh, you know, get into scripture, uh, have good relationships, have meals together, uh, and, and pray. And, and that's part of what we're doing uh, today is uh, sharing this meal here and then sharing a meal over there and uh, uh, as a way of kind of helping us to be a healthy church, a universal church, uh, one that lives in the life and the love and the spirit of Christ. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this day that we get to be together. Heavenly Grace and John Knox as uh, your uh, families of faith coming together. So I pray that you would use this time as we come to communion. That you would bless our uh, relationship with you. That you would speak to our hearts about what we as individuals can do to draw closer to you. And then what can we do to be better brothers and sisters to one another between our churches and with other churches throughout our nation and world? Uh, so may you use this time as we come to communion. Amen. I'm going to ask Pastor VJ to come on up and join me at the table. So the, the way that we serve communion here, we'll have servers on, um, on the sides up front. So you'll come down the sides to pick up uh, bread, take bread, and then Pastor Vijay and I will be in the middle. We'll have a, a cup. So take the bread, dip it in the cup, and then go back to your seat. Uh, you'll also see at the side that there are little individual cups. If you need gluten-free, uh, those will be... Uh, also at, at the servers at the sides. Um, and that is how we will uh, do communion. So we hear uh, the words of uh, the 
Paul as he uh, talks about what Christ has done, that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he was with his disciples at that Passover meal. And during supper, he took the bread and he broke it. And as he broke it, he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, said, this cup is a new covenant, the new agreement I make with you, my blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death, but also his love, his forgiveness, his sanctification, his blessing on us. So as you eat the bread and uh, the cup today, may God bless you and may you feel the love of Christ uh, in your life. So uh, may God bless our, our time. Let's pray. Dear God, as we gather in this meal, may you bless it, may you be with us, and you know, may you speak deeply of your love into our hearts. Help us to be a universal and a healthy church. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. Well, again, thank you so much for coming and being a part of this. We we're so glad to have this opportunity. Uh, so I'll start with a blessing, and then uh, Pastor VJ will uh, end with a blessing and a song. So hear this blessing. May the Lord bless you and, and keep you. And may the Lord work in your life and in our church and do more than we can ask or even imagine. To the glory of Christ and the glory of his church forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.